Hi everyone, uh, my name's Alfred. Welcome back to Kingdom of Loathing for, I believe, the 18th time. Uh, last episode, we adventured around in the giant's basement, and now we're heading up to the ground floor. Of course, the ground being where the cloud starts, but... You're fighting a procrastination giant. He never does what could be put off until tomorrow. Too bad throwing down with you couldn't be put off until tomorrow. <laughs> All right. We got Titus. What? You've got a bad case of Titus, a disease whose main symptom is intense procrastination. You never do today what you can put off until tomorrow, until including putting off the things until the day after tomorrow. Including the things you put until the day after tomorrow. All the things you put off yesterday. Also, dyslexic, dys, dyslexic people think that you're incredibly vulgar. Yeah, no wonder. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm dyslexic, although I'm not sure. <laughs> you're fighting a, med a renaissance giant. Verily, this giant doth live in a medieval fantasy world with castles, knights, and sword play. I mean, so does everyone else in the kingdom. But this giant's fantasy world's a little different. He wears a fedora and a kilt. Oh, God. Swigs mountain stream soda out of a leather mug and talks in a cellular phone while doing with a sword. Okay, so all of those things are things one could do in the Kingdom of Loathing, too. Huh. Anyway, this guy is devoted to a uh, <laughs> really devoted to a fantastic version of medieval history that never existed, and enjoys eating huge turkey legs while watching a liberal arts major juggle chainsaws. He says, "Pretty good, sir. Wouldst thou like a dis Pepsi Cola and bonks a can of it off your head?" You decide to attack him later. Oh, jeez, that's not great. Yeah, that's not good. Tongue of the Walrus. Hibernate. Conctatitis. Shoot. Uh huh. That kind of sucks that that was my first adventure there. How do I get rid of this? I guess I have to use one of the items. Consumables. Remove effect. All right. You're fighting a foodie giant. <laughs> this giant only uses locally sourced ingredients to make artisanal gourmet food. Since she lives in a castle in the clouds with a little natural flora or ecosystem, she has to rely on what she can grow in her little, to a giant, kitchen garden. Her grilled stitches with pistachio basil aioli is to die for, though. I think aioli is just mayonnaise. Pistachio basil? Ugh. She gets the jump on you. She uses her mortal and pestle to beat you into a carbon neutral pulp. <laughs> we got chipotle wasabi cilantro aioli. Oh man, I have to read that. My wife is speaking and I'm recording. What do you want, dear? Maybe. Love you, too. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. I mean, I'm not sorry. I don't care. I enjoy saying hello to my wife all the time. All right. What the hell is I looking for? I remember that it rhymed. Yada, yada. Chipotle wasabi cilantro aioli. This is a giant ramekin, so the largest bowl, of a strange experimental sauce. The combination of flavors is so strange you can't imagine what you would put on it to eat, so you decide it's probably best used as a projectile. It does a bunch of physical damage and prismatic damage. That's interesting. You're fighting a possibility, giant. Okay. You're confronted by an enemy who seems to change size and shape constantly, flickering as you stare at him. You aren't at all sure what he slash it is. He's definitely a giant, though. No, he isn't. Yes, he is. Wait, let's say he might be. Uh, he grabs your hands and throws you in a s and whips you in a circle around his head. You try to hang on tighter just to keep from being thrown to the wolves, but he throws you across the room anyway. Antique spear. Uh, he definitely maybe possibly kicks you right in the arm. He stops on your head, leaving tabloid footprints in your hair. Ooh, let's, uh, let's wallop him. We got a plot hole and a chaos butterfly. Okay. 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 K 
Chaos Butterfly is unpredictable. This butterfly, by flapping its wings, can influence events from very far away. How? I don't know. You should probably ask Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> nice. And we got a plot hole. This thing, it just doesn't add up. It deals a bunch of physical damage. Interesting. Okay, let's go to my skills. Let's use one of these. Take a quick nap. Um, let's use a dyspepsy cola and then I'll come back here when I'm out of stuff. Now the foodie giant, she cuts you with a hand forged knives and then pours some of her artisanal balsamic lemon vinegar reduction in the wound. Ew. I think I speak for all of us when I say that's got a Hoyt. We got a muscle point. All right. Uh, he kind of sort of maybe hits you in the throat. Cool. <laughs> Forsooth, he hath flung medieval insults about you about the sexual proclivities of your mother. Your feelings feel sorely wounded. Ye old bodily limerick and ye old medieval insult. Oh, man. Two plus moxie stats per fight. This is a scrap of paper with a body limerick on it. Body means deeply offensive, but written in all archaic language, so no one cares. <laughs> and uh, weakens enemies and briefly stuns them. This is a little rectangle of thick parchment paper containing a cutting insult. Well, an insult that would be cutting if it hadn't been dulled by a hundred years of irrelevance. That's rad. From Nantucket. And I read the manual. And I don't need to use that right now. I read the manual. Your mind is filled with endless strings of meaningless punctuation marks, but they seem to you like a perfectly regular form of expression. Expression. Ha ha. Your head full of limericks quite ribald, about a maid in a stallion most piebald, and a fellow named Bill, or was it McGill? No, wait, what the heck was that guy called? That's funny. Procrastination giant. Oh, no. Bip. Dang. He gave me conctititis. And we got a procrastination potion. Well, I suppose it's as good a time of any to drink it. Causes enemy to put off attacking you. This is a vial of lazily bubbling substance. The color tomorrow. Or, you know, the day after. Having the uh, thing that resists... I had a thing that resists items or uh, equip, right? I mean, jeez. You know? Uh, whatever. Um consumables conctatitis conctatitis now the foodie giant an heirloom grape a giant heirloom grape tomato sounds he hath smacked up you most sharply with the blade of his wooden sword oh whoops uh oh I'm running dry wallop him he bounces dyspepsy cola off my head. And we kill him. Cool. Now that I'm here, let's see what Vendigoba Tussin does for me. Oh, we got the Tussin. That stuff was good for what ailed you, but now you got a buzz bigger than a beehive. I have the effect wait, what? Interesting. You drink the entire bottle of Van Gogh Batussin. The post-impression left on you post-conception is like, whoa. Okay. Okay. Top of the castle, Ma. The ground floor is much better than the basement, so it doesn't take you nearly as long to find the steps leading up to the ground floor. Top floor, I mean. Cool. Now we can go there. I think I found everything there. Possibility giant. Yeah, I could loot their rooms and stuff. I might want this pewter claymore, unless it's two-handed. It probably is, though. Yep, two-handed sword. Ah, oh, well. The regenerating MP is nice, though. But I don't actually care. All right. Ooh. Well, I'm pretty close. On the other hand, maybe I should just go buff myself. Seal Club Frenzy. Seal Club Frenzy. 
And let's see if I can go buy another item. Another thingy, I mean. I think I'm a little short, though. Oh, I am. Ten minutes, babe. Love you. I think she needs me for something, but... Uh, am I a bad husband? Probably, right? Ah, oh, well. No, not all well. I should go. I'll be right back. This isn't that important. All right, I just helped my wife bring in a heavy, heavy armchair that we got. I certainly do start here a lot now that I've noticed. We're on episode, like, 18, and not cutting cuts. I've probably started here pretty much every time, even with cuts, because this is a cut. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I just buffed myself up all to hell, so let's uh, let's head over up the Beanstalk and onto the top floor. I'm brave. You're fighting a goth giant. This giant is dressed only in three colors. Black, the color of a soul. White, the color of bone. And red, the color of sweet, sweet blood. And pink, the color of acne that comes from caking on white makeup all the time. The pain in his soul is only equal to the pain in your lower back after he kicks it. <laughs> and again, awful poetry journal. Hell yeah, bro. All right. Awful poetry journal. What the hell? No one understands my pain. I stand alone out in the rain. My soul is bobbing in the water of Princess Miasma and her dark daughters. This, poet this journal is full of the worst poetry you've ever read. The words rain, soul, and miasma feature prominently in every poem. What happens if I use it? Your small intestine attempts to strangle you from within. God. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's hilarious. All right. Let's look at my wounds. Twice, in fact. Three. All right. How many? I'll keep going. You're fighting a raver giant. Oh, boy. This giant is wearing huge baggy pajama pants, a very large Scooby-Doo t-shirt, an enormous red and white striped hat. He waves two gargantuan glow sticks at you while he chews on a positively Brobdingnagian pacifier. He seems peaceful, but his ungainly elephantine feet are dancing ever close to you while repetitive electronic music goes him on. He manages to stomp on you, but doesn't miss a beat. Bonk. Mix vapo, mix icy vapo hotness rub. Oh man, it's mostly a potion. Minus fifty combat initiative, but plus twenty five percent muscle. Whoa, sweet merciful Jesus! This is the strongest smelling muscle rub you've ever encountered. It's like if a spearmint fairy took a crap on a candy cane, only more medicinal smelling. My wife just bought me some food. A punk rock giant. Hell yeah, I love this guy. This giant is an antichrist and an anarchist and believes that those two words rhyme for some reason. He wants to be your boyfriend, to be sedated, and to sniff some glue. But mostly he wants to listen to near do wells with no musical talent, bang on three chords on a guitar, and shout about how angry and hardcore they are. For some reason, that desire <laughs> necessitates having a mohawk and a leather jacket with pins and buttons stuck all over it. He sips a double, whis a double whiskey Coke No Ice and sneers at you about, above the metallics on his jackets and, apropos of nothing, sneers, recognize the giant slut. He beats you with a baseball bat. What can you do? That's a Ramon song. Oh, geez. I'm low on health. Hmm. Huh. Let's do the chaos butterfly since I may as well die anyway. Reality is altered in unpredictable ways. Well. All right. I guess I'll lose one rank of the Tussin if I hibernate. And then um, I'll drink a mountain stream. I'll drink two. Oh, whoops. 
Those are more than I thought. Oh, I'm a fool. Let's head back. A steampunk giant. Oh, boy. This giant is wearing a corset and long, flowing skirt, bedecked with gears and copper tubing. Got a parasol in one hand and some elaborate ray gun contraption made of wood, copper, and glowy bits in the other. Got a top hat with goggles perched atop them and a monocle tucked over one eye. She's clearly a girl genius. She looks like the shared fever dream of Charlotte Bronte and Robert Henlon. She loosens her corset and body slams you with a huge amount of giant gut. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Dress <laughs> <Throw a> smack. <laughs> now the punk rock giant, he stomps you with his giant crusty boots. Crust punk is possibly the grossest thing. <laughs> giant crusty boots. Whoa, he's really tough. Let's wallop him. All right. Ooh, I think I actually have enough cash to go get that thing now. Meep bitty beep buddy. Hey. Good, you're back and just in time. Our scouts have pinpointed the location of your nemesis. Nemesis is the hideout of your nemesis. Cave in the Big Mountains. I will mark it on your map for you. It's essentially recover the stolen artifact as soon as possible. But be wary. The place is undoubtedly filled with malicious traps and evil guards. Okay, you say. Well, if it's that dangerous, how about sending some backup with me? Oh, yeah, that'd be nice, but the other members of the uh, Brotherhood have their own quests at the moment. I myself have a pressing mission to wash those windows. God's beard, look at how filthy they become. Right. Besides, this is between you and your nemesis. It's a one on one struggle. No getting around it. That's one of the rules. Hey, man, if I'm heading towards Virgil Battle 2, better up. All right. Wow, I am dry. All right. Better, better. Am I? Did I ever see that other thing? The Rage of the whatever? Rage of the Ranger is here. Maybe if I go and refresh it. Huh. Hide of the walrus. Close the... I just bought a thing, right? <laughs> Am I going crazy here? <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, well... This means that I can go get my nemesis. I can now go to Fernsworthy's Tower as well. I may as well do that. See if I can get it out of the way. You approach the doors to Fernsworthy's tower, what's left of it, and fit the high, uh, heavy iron key in the lock. After a moment's struggle against the rust, you manage to turn the key in the lock, and the door opens with the unexpected creaky, creepy creak noise, along with the somewhat less expected snap as the key breaks in the lock. You peer cautiously into the ruined structure and surprisingly fi unsurprisingly find it to be crawling with monsters. Must have been breeding here in the years since the tower was destroyed. The entire chamber is open to the sky, but the tower must have been toppled on the s to the side as it fell, so there's comparatively little wreckage in here. The majority of it appears to have been concentrated on the far side of the open room. If you want to examine so if you want to examine it further, you're gonna to have to fight your way there. Cool. A yeast beast. This abomination is made of magically animated yeast. Someday these beasts will rise and revolt. In fact, they're already sort of revolting. Dang. Hey, we got more wads of dough. Cool. A brain sweeper. This is a disembodied brain used to control a set of brooms. Why? For science. This is a fallout enemy, I, I suspect. You're fighting a were taco. <laughs> You're fighting a were You're fighting a were taco. This is a were taco, an ordinary man who, when the moon is full, turns into a half man, half taco monstrosity. Incidentally, for some detail-oriented people out there, the Were Taco's lycanthropic cycle is not tied to Ronal or Grimace, but to some completely unrelated moon in some completely unrelated alternate dimension. That's why you never see him turn into a human, seriously. Yeah, of course, because we can see that these are not full moons. That's funny. You're finding a chowder golem. This is a golem made of clam chowder. New England clam chowder, that is. The oyster crackers look especially dangerous. Nice. Fighting a bread golem. This is a golem made of a loaf of bread. You find him crusty and his wit stale. Having thought the previous sentence, you hope he almost manages to kick his ass. You, you almost hope he manages to kick your ass. Nice. A lesser fruit golem. 
the golem that Farnsworthy apparently made out of a handful of fruit. Wrath in its eyes, it stalks toward you on legs, not made of celery, but grapes. All right. Staring into nothing. You clear away enough of the rubble to reveal an archway that opens onto a crumbling flight of stairs. The stairs end halfway up, and peering over the remains of the tower wall, you can see the tumbled stone blocks and wreckage of where the rest of the tower fell when it crumbled. They look like they've been thoroughly scavenged by human and monster alike, so if you're going to find anything here at all, they're going to be the ruins below. Actually, let's pop out back here. Stairs to nowhere. They do nothing. Okay. Interesting. Actually, I've been recording for a little bit. Um, and my food's here and it's getting cold. So I'm going to cut this episode early. Uh, I'll come back when I have ground up something interesting. Uh, I've been Alfred. This has been Kingdom of Loathing. Play it yourself. And... Help your significant other if they've got something. We just moved a very handsome armchair into here. Uh, she had moving people, like, helping her carry it in, so she didn't actually need my help, but she was grateful for it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop it, Alfred. I hate ending these. I hate, I hate it. Ah. <laughs>